gonna show two basic setups in a classroom of how we can use our remote learning equipment uh, when we do a Google Meet for each of our classrooms, when we do it live in the classroom and synchronously at home at the same time. So this is kind of what a front of us standard classroom looks like these days. If we kind of swing around here, what we look at here is students that are in the classroom and then students that are in our Google Meet at the same time. So what we're really trying to do is bring at home into the classroom and bring our classroom directly at home so that we can be teaching to both our kids at home and our kids in the classroom at the same time. This is our streaming software. It's still the same streaming meeting software we've been using all along. It's still Google Meets. It's still gonna be on our devices here in the same way we've been doing it all along. We're just gonna be extending our desktop here to be bigger on the screen and we're providing for a better camera and then also a microphone, a direct microphone when needed in the classroom. Those are the three items that we're adding to the Google Meet. All we do is put this right on the tray here. What we're gonna connect is our HDMI cable to the device. It plugs directly into the side. And if you pull out here and just look for a second, you're gonna see that we'll see this up on the TV. There's our Google Meet, large. All we do was plug it right into the device. The next thing we're gonna do is plug our camera in. See our camera up top here. We're gonna come back out again. And there's just a USB connection for the camera. So I plug my camera into the side of the device. And it's as simple as that. So USB, HDMI, we're connected to our television. So we have an omnidirectional mic here on top of the television. That's where we can get our room mic. If I'm going to have a discussion between the class and the kids at home, I can do that right here. Uh, I also have the ability to use our Bluetooth microphone, which goes very simply right in our ear, and this connects again to the same device that we've been using all along. On the Bluetooth microphone, we've got about eight hours of straight talk time, so if I was talking from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., I would have charge for eight hours on this. Um, so when we're done at the end of the night, each night, we have a nice little charging case right here, and I just slide that right in there to charge every single night. So there's different combinations of using this microphone with the sound in my ear, this microphone with the sound from the television, this microphone with the sound on the television. So there's, there's different options we can use in how we use sound in the classroom. Generally, when we're using this microphone, it sounds pretty good, it sounds pretty decent, but there may be times and needs where you need a little more clarity. If you have students that have a need to hear more clarity for the purposes of closed captioning and those types of things, we can use the Bluetooth mic for those purposes. format where I put the television in the middle of the room, I put, I put the television that way, that's where I hear my Google Meet, that's where I can talk to my kids directly, and then, so basically if I'm doing instruction this way, I can be talking about what we're talking about here, talk to the kids, talk to the screen, all at the same time. So in these different modes, I can have the speaker on while we're talking to the kids at home, and the kids in the classroom can hear that. If I'm using the omni omnidirectional microphone, the conversations can take place between the kids in the room and the kids um, in the Google Meet at the same time. If I'm doing, again, a direct, where I'm doing direct instruction, where there really isn't a conversation piece back and forth, I can use the microphone so that these guys hear me even more clearly than what the, the high quality microphone does on top of the camera at the same time. So we have options for teachers. So if this is too far back, we can move it forward. We can move it further back. It's mobile, we can move this around, and we can do what works best for each classroom teacher. Now we're talking K through 12, so everybody does things slightly different. So one setup may work better for, for maybe secondary or a special type of classroom, and another one may work better for K12. So the nice thing is we have lots of options to move these pieces around. 
this setup here is a little bit tighter and I have a little bit more quicker access to getting the pieces while sharing the classroom uh, to the folks in class and the Google Classroom at the same time. So if it's further back in the room, you may, the kids themselves may not see what's happening on TV where the teacher can see it the whole time. This setup here is a little bit tighter and I have a little bit more quicker access to getting the pieces while sharing the classroom uh, to the folks in class and the Google Classroom at the same time.